my first boot camp that I ever ran was with Owen in San Francisco in January of 2003. For 21 years, I've been running these programs pretty much every single week, well, every other weekend. So, you know, if you're in your early 20s, you were likely a small child when I began doing this professionally, maybe even a baby. So, you know, I just say that to give you sort of an idea of the level of experience that I bring to bear on this. And, you know, I've been doing this as like an obnoxious, like I've been living this lifestyle to an obnoxious degree for that entire time. So I'm basically like a weird cartoon character at this point. Now, many people probably do not want to become some weird cartoon character. Most people probably want what I would consider, you know, they would call competence. And what does competence look like? I think most people, they just want the ability to see somebody that piques their interest at a networking event or the supermarket or wherever and know that they have the ability to go up, strike up a conversation in a way that's not going to be weird, well, maybe not too weird, but, you know, that's going to be smooth. And then if they get into that conversation, they're going to have the ability to introduce whatever angle they're interested in, whether that's becoming a client, whether that's going into business together, whether that's a romantic angle, they can introduce that in a smooth way. And then they know how to put forth intro or invitations that are likely to be accepted if the person's in that headspace and then they can go. So as opposed to like, oh shit, I just get stifled and hung up. What we're talking about is understandings of human psychology. We're talking about understandings about how your energy system functions in life and communication, like what's going on internally as you attempt to communicate, how to, how to um, like I said, put forth invitations that are likely to be accepted, understanding the waypoints of various types of interactions. Because, you know, I think that there's, there's two axes you really want to focus on in any, any sort of interaction. There's first the vibe, right? It's like a vertical expansion of a feeling. And then you have the horizontal plot development. How do you move it forward? Because every time, like, look, if you want to have a boring conversation with your fucking neighbor when you're bringing the trash in, that does not require special skill. If you want to talk to the cashier at Walgreens, that does not require special skill. If you want to sell and close sales, if you want to get romantic with somebody you just met in a very short time period, those types of things, the, people don't do these things on, on a regular everyday basis, most people at least. These types of things, they require skill, they require technique, they require practice, they require control. So you need to understand like the conventions of those types of, of those types of interactions and how to move from step to step to step. And that's where like things like stratagems, gambits, technique comes into play. But what I found, you know, and in, particularly in the past several years, my focus has been more on that vibing aspect because if you are incapable of slicing through somebody's RAS. Y'all know what RAS is? Anyone yeah. can give a definition of that? What is that? Selective focus. Selective focus, right? So if you're out in a nightlife environment, for example, there's a lot going on there, right? There's the lights, the music, the dancing, the friends, the alcohol, all of that, all of that stuff. And if you're gonna go up to somebody and have them stop paying attention to all of that and say, I need to pay attention to this person. Look fucking here you're gonna to have to bring something to bear there. It's gotta be something different. Like I had a friend, um, an ex-student of mine who went on to become very, very good. Uh, he, he surpassed me, in fact. He, he became expert, you know, master level. In fact, he died a couple of years ago of testicular cancer, oddly enough. But um, he, by the end of it, he had moved to like Joshua Tree and he was like the DMT shaman for a coven of strippers. It was very weird. But yeah, very, very straight. Like that's that's like the level. He became a weird cartoon character, basically. Um, but but he he told me, you know, because I would hang out with him every time I'd go out to Vegas because he was living there. And, and and so he's like, you know what it is, Jeff? I figured all of this in a nutshell. Everybody's bored. When you go out and talk to people, everybody's fucking bored out there. You got to give them something different to talk about, and then make it easy for them to go with you and not feel guilty about it. So give them something different to talk about. That's really creating that vibe. And then making it easy for them to go with you. That's understanding those steps and moving through them seamlessly they, where they don't even see the steps. I don't want the experience to be like clank, 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 clank. I want it to be, again, they don't even see the steps. It's just like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Everything's just, again, you can't see the steps. It's just happening so smoothly because there's this avalanche of bullshit that's just coming out of my fucking mouth. This jazz odyssey of fucking bullshit that's just continually spilling out of my mouth. And, and then I'm moving it forward very methodically, slowly but surely, incrementally introducing it. Like, I'm like a glacier. Like, it's like, it, it is inevitable. Going back to the, actually, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself here, too much coffee. So 
let's find out. I'm going to, again, pick your brain. What's you there? You there. What is your goal in all of this? Like, what's your quantifiable goal? Like, how will you know when you've succeeded in this? Competence for me would be not feeling stifled um, really ever. 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 Damn, all right. That's interesting. That's a, that's, a, that's a tall order. If there's an anxiety trigger, once that's been installed, it cannot be removed, no matter how much you try. Just like from our understanding of neurochemistry, neuroscience, once an, an anxiety trigger has been installed in the amygdala, you cannot get rid of it, ever. It is indelible. At least, again, to our best understanding of how the brain works right now, which we don't really know much about it, but to our best understanding. So, I mean, that's useful from a certain standpoint because you don't have to keep relearning to put, not put your hand on the fucking stove like from an evolutionary biology standpoint, but when the danger is somehow like arbitrarily related to reality, like what's so useful about being scared of expressing yourself to a stranger? It's, it's, not, it's not very useful, right? Particularly in modern society, you know, when you're going, these, these are anonymous people that you're never gonna see again. I mean, again, if it's, it's like a small tribe back in Paleolithic era, perhaps there is a serious danger of you being cast out to the, the savanna to die. But here, that's, that's not gonna happen. You know this intellectually, but regardless, you can't get rid of it. What you can do is you can change your relationship with it. You can cool, you can cool those triggers off. And more importantly, you can, you can put in place certain ways to deal with it. So for example, when I go out, I've been doing this, like I said, for 21 years now. When I first step out, I will feel a reluctance to do the first approach. You're like, what? After this many years? Yeah, because it's, it's just a homeostasis. I'm in a certain state, and now it's time to switch into that different state. I'm like, I feel fine now. If I go start doing this, I'm I, you know, expending a different type of energy through my face, voice, and body, different quality of energy, go talk to these people, it might, I might not feel good, right? I might not feel good. And as Owen always says, your brain wants proof, not promises. Say it, proof, not promises. So you can tell your brain the whole time, like, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, nothing bad is gonna happen. Your brain's like, shut the fuck up. I don't want your little flowery language, okay? No matter what you say, you cannot convince me that humiliation does not equal death. Humiliation equals death to the, mid, to the monkey brain, right? That midbrain, that, that limbic system brain. Humiliation equals death. So again, you're gonna feel that reluctance and what's gonna happen, the mind's gonna wanna shut it down. How does the mind shut it down? It's gonna call it, and most people don't even, they're not even aware of this because it's not verbally thought out in your mind. It's not verbally thought out in your mind. It is a right-brained, culturally conditioned error that just simply happens. Mind says there's about to be a change in the way I'm communicating that could result in censure, embarrassment, humiliation. Let's shut that down. Mind can't do shit to shut it down by itself, so it calls into play the body as its enforcer. And what it does, it calls, it calls physical tension into play. The physical tension will creep up on your ass and you will not even be aware of it. You won't even be aware of it. It's very subtle, it's almost subliminal, that onset of physical tension. It might be generalized shoulder neck tension, it could be jaw clenching, it could be breath holding, it could be darting wandering eyes, it could be fucking with the cuticles, weird hand finger activity, it could be hands tucked into the pockets, locked knees, shifting from foot to foot, any number of things. But once that grabs a hold of your ass, you're, you're locked in. It's gonna be very difficult to take any action at that point. And now you are stifled. So personally, I know if I go out there and I don't immediately start going, that's, that could happen to me. Now, I also have met, like, ways to get out of that. I've developed strategies to get out of that, that state. But ideally, you don't, want, you don't even wanna get into that. So <clears throat> what do I do? My, my basic, game plan, if you will, as soon as I go out, I know I have like a minute to talk to someone and I'm just gonna have a bullshit 30 second conversation. This could be, again, you walk into the party, you walk into the networking event, you walk into the industry event, whatever it is. You gotta have a 30 second conversation with just some random person that you don't even give a fuck about. Somebody that you have no vested interest in it working out well. Just like some random worker. Hey man, it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty busy here tonight, huh? Just a quick little 30 second bullshit conversation to give your mind the proof. Then, you ha then it has the proof. The promise was the promise. It's just flowery language. This is the proof. I'm not vaporized. I'm still here. I'm still corporeal. Holy shit, nothing bad happened. Dudes didn't rappel down from the ceiling and beat the fuck out of me with sticks. Like, wow, I'm still here. Now you can go. I've always been someone that uh, hid a lot of my emotions. 
uh, since a young age because I was always like that. It's really safe to just not show any emotions, not show any arguments, uh, opinions. So over time, it has just created a big shell uh, on me. And with the Charisma program, I tried to really amp up my emotions a lot. And that caused me to really touch a source of emotion in me. So it, it was a bunch of big changes inside that I feel that it couldn't be possible without a program like that of just having to live up to some standards that I didn't have enough in the in the last uh, several years. It's been really helpful for me of just spending more energy instead of just trying to be calm all the time. And I've been really feeling it through my emotions over the last few weeks. <laughs>